Hi, I'm Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own universal custom fight stick. What's special about this fight stick is it has many uses, and those uses are up to you. This first example, with some custom art, houses a Raspberry Pi inside. Just like this one back here. Same thing, more custom graphics, Raspberry Pi. This serves as a functional case for the Raspberry Pi, keeps it nice and safe, and it also works as a full arcade stick. So you can stick this on your lap, plug it into your television or monitor, and play the classic games with arcade control. It also serves as like a consoleized version for the Raspberry Pi. This can go next to your television and you still have access to the USB port. The other uses is we can take the same shell and using a keyboard encoder, make this fight stick work on console of your choice. There's many different types of encoders out there. You can pick the one that suits your needs. I'm going to show you how to use a Cade to make a PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2 controller. But this one's going to be special because it'll have two functions. The first is a regular PlayStation controller with all the buttons laid out. And the next is, if you can guess, a Guitar Hero or Button Hero controller that we can play Guitar Hero games without the need for a plastic controller. It's a long video because I'm going to show you how to build both. Feel free to skip through the sections to only watch what you need to. Okay, let's put it together. We have eight main face buttons, then we have nine, ten, eleven, twelve total buttons on the fight stick. This is how we're going to wear them. Here's the button side, and when you have a micro switch in these, we're only concerned with two out of the three connections. The bottom tab is ground, and the middle tab is the signal path for these. We'll be taking our ribbon cable that has a 0.1 inch space connection on it and we'll be making crimp connectors for the ends. And the way we'll connect these, we'll just have each individual one go to the RPI, Raspberry Pi, GPIO headers. Wherever they're supposed to go respectively to however we programmed it. That's what this will be for. The rest, we have to make a ground daisy chain. And we'll just be taking regular 22 gauge wire stranded and connecting it with crimps throughout all the arcade buttons. And then one of these will return to the ground connection on the Raspberry Pi. Got some wire and I'm gonna cut this into 
about four inch strips. And we'll need seven of these to connect the main eight buttons on the face. Now we need to strip the ends. And now we'll connect them with our crimp connectors. I'll start with the very last one. And I want this one to be slightly longer on the stripped end. Because this is a pretty small gauge to fit as a single wire into this crimp connector. We're gonna fold it over and crimp it inside, fold it in half. And now we'll repeat that a lot. And this is the daisy chain. Now we've got seven together and for the eighth one we need to terminate it to a connection that will plug into the Raspberry Pi wherever ground is supposed to be. The ground's done. Next I've got more jumper cable. This is 30 centimeters long, female ends on both sides. I have eight together. We're gonna remove the tips and then crimp some more crimp connectors on top. These will be the signal path for all the arcade buttons. Next we'll mount the joystick. Before we continue assembling, this is the best time to paint your fight stick. I recommend, especially if you're using a pretty coarse and uneven grain like oak, to prime it first. I've been using this latex paint to prime with a little bit of this Floetrol additive. It makes it a little bit easier, removes the brush strokes, or it makes it thin enough and viscous enough that you can use a foam brush. And then for the final coats, just Rust-Oleum spray can works as well. Your other options, if you want a quicker way to paint, you can use adhesive back vinyl, which is what I use to do the edges on this Neo Geo. And it's the same stuff that has these decals on the edge. Stick it on your wood. Before we work on and wire the top control panel, we're gonna glue in this reinforcer plate that goes on the front. It's optional, but I like it. Before we do the assembly on the front, if you're gonna do graphics, now's the time. For the Neo Geo, I just printed a Neo Geo graphic I made. And you can see very carefully where I'm supposed to cut out, and I'm also cutting out by hand with a utility knife where the buttons go. For the sake of being different, I prepped one in, in advance. This is a PS1 with button labels and the holes already cut out, and that's just going to align perfectly on top. Then we'll take our acrylic cover and peel off the plastic. I'll do the front first. And then I'll do the back, and I'm going to try to be really careful I don't touch the back because this is going to be covering the artwork. And I'll 
I'll just place that on top, and now I'm going to attach all my arcade buttons. And for the corner, we have a smaller 16 millimeter button. Now we're going to wire. I've labeled the buttons how I have it or how I want to configure my Raspberry Pi with keyboard buttons. And I also have, you know, master wiring of how this is going to map out onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIOs. Now we'll add our buttons, our micro switches. Now we're going to wire to our Pi. You can use a Pi 2, Pi 3 if you want. I'm going to use a Pi 1 for this demonstration. To make wiring a lot easier and simpler, I already printed out a cheat sheet that has all the GPIOs labeled how I want them. And we're just going to press this onto the Raspberry Pi's GPIO headers. Now it's a matter of using our wiring harnesses that we made and matching our button labels and directions up, down, left, right with what our cheat sheet says. And this cheat sheet is on my website. For the directionals, we'll just peel five. We need up, down, left, right, and ground. And we'll connect straight into this Molex connection. Now we terminate to the Pi. Signals are connected, now we need to terminate to ground with these guys and we'll use our daisy chain for that. So we'll find a ground on the Pi. This one's good. And now we'll terminate our grounds to the buttons. The smaller 16 millimeter button doesn't have large tabs we can connect to with quick connect terminals, crimps. Next we'll install the buttons that go in the base of the arcade. And I've already made wiring harnesses for these. Now we're going to mount the Raspberry Pi inside. Now we connect the rest of our buttons. The wiring is complete right now. If you want to take it a step further, you can install, which is all optional, a DC jack and a on-off switch, and they'll go respectively in the back here. And you can wire this. Make sure you only connect five volts to this, but you can wire it directly to one of the five volt and ground GPIOs to turn the fight stick on and off with your Raspberry Pi, or turn the Raspberry Pi on and off. Now we're going to install some number 8 screws on the back and we'll add a spacer and a coupling nut so we can secure everything together and easily get inside of it if we need to. Before we enclose everything, there's a shorter number 8 screw and that's going to go over here in this hole and that will help keep this part of the plastic cover from lifting up. Now we place the top on.
If you want, you can add felt pads to the bottom to keep it these screws from scratching. Wearing this thing up can be not complicated, but wrapping your head around it is kind of weird because we're going to try and make two different controllers in one. You can see inside, we're wiring to a CAD device, or this is just a encoder, keyboard encoder used for arcades. This one's called CAD. There are many types of keyboard encoders. But I picked the Cade because, one, it was really inexpensive and I like the breakouts to wire to it. But the second is the firmware is that you can make different controllers for this. Well, there's a lot. So we're going to try and mimic a PlayStation 1 controller. But because this Cade has a shift function so we can have two control sets in the same configuration, we're also going to try and do a Guitar Hero controller. So if you will, a hybrid PlayStation Guitar Hero controller. In order to do this, the first thing we need to look at is inside the Guitar Hero manual. If you were to plug in a regular controller or if you want to know what the button mappings are for the Guitar Hero controller, so we see what the note colors correspond to, we'll look at our customized fight stick with two rows of five buttons that are going to be the exact same for the frets, and we can copy down what goes where. Remember that we're going to have two different control schemes, so we need to look at the regular controller mode on this Guitar Hero layout. Easiest way to do that is to do the X circle triangle square in somewhat normal locations. Of course, these can be arranged to whatever you want to customize. Start and select are going to be in the front of this arcade controller. We can summarize all the information on this chart, and with this information, we can now proceed to the software for the Cade to program it to a custom, either a custom configuration or just a generic configuration for whatever mode you want it to be. In this case, a PlayStation controller. This is the Cade fir firmware or software loader. We're going to go to the customization option. And looking at this, remember, one set is for the PlayStation regular controller, and then the shifted function will be our Tar Hero controller configuration. Consulting our chart, we can match what button should be where from the PlayStation controller to the Guitar Hero controller. And that's what we're doing right now. Now that we have everything configured, and then you would program the K device with this software package, once that's done, we now have to wire everything. You'll need a PlayStation cable or a broken controller. Remove the controller side, expose the wires, and then you'll need to use an ohmmeter to find the pinout or ring out what pin from the controller edge is what wire inside that cable. And then we can begin wiring it to the CADE. And this is what they have on their website. The B2, B1, ground, positive voltage, A9, A10, and B3. Just wire those to the respective places and just know the colors inside that cable will vary from what this diagram is. This diagram is just to illustrate how you connect it. The rest of the arcade is pretty simple. Just wire what buttons you want where, going from our chart, and then you're done. We'll test some games just to verify functionality. Tekken 3, a Guitar Hero. Also works with Guitar Hero 3, but I can't find that one. And a Sega Genesis collection for PS2.
Thank you.